Welcome back to Spitball and Cards. In today's episode, we have a small debate on Topps, Dynasty, and other RPAs versus Bowman Chrome Autographs and where we think that these cards could be heading. So let's introduce who's here. My name is Scott. We also have Phil, Jeff, and Ty. We appreciate you watching or listening if you're on Spotify. But let's summarize kind of some backstory about why we want to have this conversation. So recently, Ty who is in the bottom right corner, has another channel that he's a part of called Sports Card Investor, particularly the Market Movers channel. And on that channel, he made a video talking about a sleeping giant in his eyes of Topps Dynasty, which is a fantastic set. There's RPAs. They're all numbered to 10 or less. And Ty thinks that that set in particular is going to be the future of baseball cards. Is that accurate, Ty? I don't want to put words in your mouth before I keep going. Yeah, I would I would say RPAs, I think, have a lot of potential in baseball. And if I had to pick a set, Dynasty would be the set. Okay. But then me in the chat, we kind of just discussed how I, I think they're awesome and gorgeous and sexy cards, but I disagreed slightly in some ways. So let's have you kick it off, Ty. Why do you think that the this is the set of the future? And then I'll give my rebuttal and then we can move from there. Yeah. So essentially, and I like you said, I did a video on this kind of breaking it down somewhat in detail, but the premise is pretty simple. And that is we've got football and ba uh, basketball cards moving from obviously Panini over into tops in the coming one to two years. And those collectors, th the king of the castle is RPAs big time. Yes. Like prism black, one of ones and other sets. There are a lot of sets that do really well and sell for really big money in those, but largely RPA is king. And in general, Panini high end products, just the, the sealed products themselves completely obliterate tops in terms of the price tag that they're able to command for those. Obviously that correlates to the, you know, theoretical value of the cards inside the box. Um, when I look at RPAs of all the notable baseball players of the last, let's say five years, rookies, uh, they just pale, absolutely pale in comparison to the prices of Bowman Chrome autos, or even just of Bowman of, of tops, Chrome autos, tops, Chrome rookie autos. Um, so when I started looking at those and then over the last year became really infatuated and enamored with dynasty as a product, knowing that these are game use patches, uh, on card autos, stunning designs, all of those different factors. I just started looking at it saying, why is it that I could get a Ronald Acuna jr. Uh, you know, a year ago, I could have gotten a Ronald Acuna jr. Number to 10 dynasty RPA from 2018 for like $1,500 and then go stack that up against what you could get in terms of a Bowman Chrome auto or less for that matter in a lower grade. It just didn't, there's some, there's something that doesn't add up. And when I see those types of things where it just logically doesn't make sense, I start digging deeper. I start going deeper. Maybe I start talking myself into it a little bit, but on my biggest wins in terms of like speculation on things that I think have potential in every one of those scenarios over the last five years, that's how it starts. I start seeing something and I go, this just doesn't make sense. What would it take for something to trip off and make people also have the same, you know, recognize the same thing. And in this case, I think that that is, like I said, collectors who, and, and maybe call it flippers, investors, whatever the hype beast is coming over formally from Panini products into tops products for the first time via football or basketball as their primary vehicle and also having an interest in baseball whether it's purely monetarily driven or driven by interest in that sport as one of their other favorite sports and starting to look at these products saying hmm why would i pay all this money for a prospect card of a kid that looks like he's 16 in a jersey that doesn't correlate to his team that he plays for today you know, I'm not interested in prospecting because that's not a thing in football and basketball the same way it is in baseball. They come over, they've got the marketing engine of tops and fanatics behind this push. Michael Rubin has stated, as has Jeff Gordon, the, the uh, I guess he's like the CSO of um, fanatics collectibles. They've all said they want high-end products to start moving the needle up, up, up more toward where Panini, the type of prestige that Panini products have today in that same realm. Um, and I just, I think there's a lot of things. I think there's a whole bunch of things that could contribute to these cards. So specifically what I'm saying isn't that I would expect dynasty cards that are coming out, even maybe in the new set 2023, but certainly not in 2024, 25, 26 outpace Bowman Chrome autos. What I'm saying is I think over the next one to three years that 
dynasty RPAs and p- potentially others as well from high end uh, tops products from like, let's say 2016 up until 2022 will potentially, or I think will actually outpace the gains that the same Bowman Chrome autos would see for those players in the coming few years. I think there's way more upside on the RPAs than there is on the Bowman Chrome autos, which are already the top dollar cards. So Phil, Jeff, do you want to say anything before I jump into my thoughts? Go ahead. The reason I ask it, I have a few counter arguments to what you're saying. Um, And I understand like, First thing I want to say is I sometimes prefer rookie cards over prospect cards, Bowman Chrome autographs. I get that. I think rookies are cool and there's something about rookie cards, but I also think rookie cards have been completely destroyed in the last three years. And I have no interest in any rookie cards of any rookie moving forward personally. Uh, at least that that's a bit dramatic, but I have, and not many. There's too many. Yes, but that's yes. how it's going to be moving forward. I know you specified 2016 to 2020, but like that's a four year gap. Like, is that really going to? Yeah. Like, I said 2022. Crazy. Even I just think I, I think I disagree. Let me is. show you. Yeah. Let me show you why. So here is Jordan Alvarez in 2020. He had a lot of rookies, but if you compare that to 2023 and 2024, what Ellie De La Cruz is going to have, it's significantly less rookies. Here is Jordan Alvarez with RPAs. There are just way too many RPAs. Way too many RPAs. You have Sterling. You have uh, what is this one? Are your triple threads? You have Dynasty. You have Museum Collection. This is this is what I found on eBay in like a two minute search. This is nothing thought out. You have Inception. You have Tier One. You have Definitive, which is technically a more high end set. You have Transcendent, which I didn't even include here. You have Luminaries. You have the Reverence Patch. Here's another Luminaries. Here is a five star. Another Inception. Like we have completely ruined, in my opinion, long term appreciating value. Of rookie cards compared Scott, to will you cards. will you remind our viewers what what you mean when you talk yeah. about RPAs? I'm so sorry. Yeah, RPAs is rookie patch autograph. So a rookie card with a either a patch or a jersey piece, and the card is signed. So yeah. Um, and RPA technically, I could be wrong. I'm not like a basketball guy, but like the RPA for patch, it can just be a plain jersey technically, right? Yeah. In fact, many times it is, and yeah. it's, and it's typically not worn even by the player at this point. Especially like, yeah. in football and basketball, which is amazing about baseball, by the way, that they're all game-worn. And I, obviously 162 games versus, what, 16 or 17 in football. But my point is I have a hard time believing that any rookie card is going to be able to compete, especially with the fact that baseball collectors up to this point, we love sets that aren't patch autographs. These have historically lagged behind, and they're gaining value. Like, you're right, Ty, I think there is a trend but I don't think it's going to be anything crazy for like even moving forward with players. Like if we look at baseball, real one autographs and heritage are big for players. Then we see tops, Chrome autographs and baseball are big Bowman Chrome autographs and baseball are big tops, Chrome Sapphire and baseball autographs are big. Plus we have flagship parallels that are emphasized significantly more. At least I feel like it is like the blacks, uh, you know, to their respective year and tops, Chrome golds than we see in a lot of prism outside of like the golds out of 10 because there's so many freaking parallels in those sets. So I do feel like it's a different beast. Collectors have been collecting a specific way and we can try to make dynasty happen. And I do think it's cool. And if I was picking an autograph of some players, that would be my go-to rookie autograph. I just think that there's too much stacked against it. And there's more I haven't gotten into, but Phil, Jeff, do you have any thoughts on what either of us have said? Go yeah. Ahead. Yeah, sure. So I see, I see uh, Teapot's thesis and you know, it's pretty strong in that we're just going to build up the brand values of our cards and we're going to target high end and we're going to try to figure out what Panini did that's working. We're going to try to close the gap. And as a result, you're going to see over the next few years, they're going to be pushing more and more of these game used cards, um, game used, not event worn in a lot of cases with Tops Definitive and with some other products. And there's going to be some chase factor with that, right? And I think if Fanatics achieves a 3x of the hobby, not even the 10x, I think that could be very good for Dynasty. It could also be very good for Bowman Chrome, though, if you were to triple the collectors. I think a lot of what T-Pop is saying is assuming some sort of crossover from other sports or you're you're kind of going after the, the new crop that hasn't quite understood and bought into the whole concept of the prospect auto and if you look at 2020 with Jordan, he did have a lot of RPAs. I think with Dynasty, he probably had roughly 100 to 110 total RPAs just from Dynasty. And that's 
fewer than they made of his Bowman Chrome Auto Blue. Just one parallel, never mind the base and all that other stuff. So unfortunately, Fanatics can do whatever they want with marketing, but they can't control the demand of the collector. And a lot of people I know that are collectors that like Bowman Chrome stuff or even rookie stuff, they don't like RPAs. The baseball guys don't like them as much. And you could yeah. look at Dynasty F1, which has done really well, I think. Now, I don't know the drivers well enough to be able to do like the crossover, but there have been some high sales of those cards, it's which could really indicate well. that this whole time it wasn't a tops execution problem that fanatics can fix. It's a baseball problem and baseball collectors prefer cards without materials in them. So I do like dynasty cards. I think they look nice. What Scott's talking about is dynasty being diluted by other rookie cards in the overprinting of those. And I kind of buy into that a little bit. I think once dynasty comes out, comes out so late in the year or the following year, yeah. Where at that point, there's just so many other options for somebody like Adley Rushman. And it's like, well, well, why this card? And by the time it comes out, it almost seems contrived and forced just because there's so much other stuff out there. Even if there are only 200 Adleys, I don't know how many they print now. It used to be three images of each player. Then it was six, then seven, then eight, then nine, then 10. I don't know how many there are now. It, of, it's of at nine this year. So, and what Phil's mentioning, sorry, Phil, I didn't mean to cut you off. Were you finished? No, go ahead. Okay. Go ahead. So what Phil's mentioning is one issue that I have in particular with Dynasty and why I have a hard time envisioning it catching on as much as we hope that it will is the fact that the way that Tops markets Tops Dynasty is every card is numbered to 10 or less. There's number to 10, number to five, one of one. No cards numbered above 10. So how does Tops get around that? They print nine of each player and have a slightly different picture. And so if you look at like LeBron from 2003, with his RPA, that card's iconic. Everybody knows that card. But with Dynasty, we have different images and they all look different and they, like quite different. And so I have a hard time believing that we're going to be able to see these cards enough to really say that is an iconic card. I need that card. And that's my concern as well, particularly with Dynasty, because Adley right now is 144 Dynasty rookies out of the base without other inserts like that's just the horizontal there's also vertical there's also duels yeah. there's also all these that's other this year though that's this year's and i said specifically not this year's i well, i'm talking it was the about same in 2020 it was eight seven well, what what can yeah. happen is though like what can happen is now they're now they're creating more and while that could could not necessarily but could negatively impact the current checklists sometimes maybe not you have to have enough of something for people to be aware of it and to actually have it have enough liquidity in the marketplace to command a presence, to command a certain image. When you have too few, then you're not going to see these things. Yes, there are different images. I don't think that impacts it nearly as much as maybe you do. Um, I, I like the novelty of that. I get what you're saying about the cards not being iconic. I have to make one thing completely clear because I've, there's probably already, you know, 40 comments for people listening to this video. And that is, I don't think I said this explicitly. I do not think Bowman Chrome autos are going anywhere. I do not think prospect cards are going anywhere. I do not think that RPAs are going to overtake Bowman Chrome autos. I don't even, I, like, I, don't, I definitely don't think that's going to happen. What I'm saying is the existing cards are so cheap. The RPAs are so cheap and they are such nice cards relative to Bowman Chrome autos. And I brought up this example when we were chatting about this the other day, Scott, but specifically, you know, Acuna's, you could get Acuna's purple Bowman Chrome auto, uh, or frankly, even his blue for basically the same price as a dynasty RPA number to 10. Th those two things don't, don't square up for me. And that's what the, that's what the big gap is. So what I, what I would say is if you're taking money and you're going to put a thousand, whether it's a thousand dollars, two thousand, four thousand, a hundred thousand dollars into dynasty RPAs or tops RPAs for key players from 2016 to 2022. I feel very, very confident that they will outperform the same Bowman Chrome autos, which are already significantly inflated in value and have much lower upside, much lower. And that's that's just squaring up apples to apples for the same player. Um Specific to whether or not there are too many RPAs or whether or not Dynasty coming out at the end of the year is a problem. We already know that's not a problem because Flawless is the last product of the year to come out in basketball and football, and it does not negatively impact it whatsoever. We also know there's 
even more dilution of high-end products and RPAs in basketball and football, way more than baseball, and it hasn't negatively impacted it. You have so yeah. many different products. Flawless, NT, Immaculate, Impeccable, Noir, Opulence, One, One and One, the list goes on and on. And then you go down to the lower tier products, like lower tier, like Spectra, Obsidian, uh, other things like that. They have tons of products. This is specifically, I think, a, a, a portal that is opening to new people coming in. And if anything, it will be the hype beast, hot money type scenario where these people are coming in for the first time into Tops products, maybe even breakers who have never ripped Tops products. And they're going to say, I want this. And I, I feel like we're already seeing it. Acuna last year in August had one of his number to 10 dynasties in a BGS 9.5 sell for $3,000 in the heat of the season when he was, you know, basically a lock or right there with Mookie for MVP. Now in the off season, we see that same card go for 4.3 K recently on eBay. So there's, that one's already climbed up. Dynasty is incredibly hot. It just came out right now. There's tons of heat around it. They put in Wemben Yama, rookie autos, rookie autos into the product. I think that's the, that's the key that's driving that specific window. So it's, I want to be really careful not to say things that I'm not saying or like make points trying to debunk my point, which aren't re actually related to what I'm saying, which is specifically cards from those years. I think I think if you take an Aaron Judge Dynasty RPA, it's going to outperform an Aaron Judge Bowman Chrome Auto over the next three years. So that's what, that's what I would say. Can I show a few things real quick? I'm going to share my screen. I did do a little bit of research, and I want to propose a question to you real quick. Right. So here is these two sales happened within a month of each other. This is the Dynasty RPA that went for uh, four thousand dollars. This Bowman Chrome Purple BGS nine point five True Gem went for twenty five hundred dollars. If these were proposed to me, if I could have this card and fifteen hundred dollars, or this card for four thousand, I would have a hard time not taking this card. And I understand this one's better looking, and I agree, rookies generally are better looking than prospect cards, which is unfortunate for baseball. But like that's. It's already like, yes, I, that specific window you're talking about in particular is good. Like Soto has three RPAs. They're all from the same set in Dynasty. Outside of those three, his National Treasures and Panini crap that's all player worn, not as valuable. Like I get that. But like if it's such a small window, how's it supposed to catch on? If we're looking at just Aaron Judge and Ronald Acuna Jr. and Soto and no one else, I mean like – is it going to catch on for them even, right? I think, like, being, I think they're the ones with the upside because it is going to catch on. What I, So Dynasty as a box may go up from $800 to $1,000 a box to $1,500 in the next three years while Fanatics pumps this product up. You have you know Corbin Carroll cards already coming out and selling with more than they've ever had on the checklist. Gunnar Henderson selling for more than what these guys were you know, a yeah. year ago. So I think, I think this is, I think, I think it's, I think it's noteworthy. I think, um, you know, it's you can take right. a case by case. Yeah. But I'm, but that's what, so that's how I look at these types of opportunities. And this is, you know, this is largely monetarily driven for sure, but it's, you know, you find the bookends of a, of a trend and then you compress in on a time frame and say, where's the gap where the prices just don't make sense. And this is the one where I'm, I'm pretty convinced of it i don't by the way have really the liquidity right now to put into these cards which is what i talked about in my video but i would if i did i would be that's i would i would feel pretty good about it Can I, I think oh sorry Phil, you go. Uh, oh i was gonna say i think some of the growth we've seen with dynasty in baseball over the last two years has been actually quite healthy you know we tend to we tend to focus more on the trends where something goes up 100 percent in six months and then it just yeah. isn't sustainable then it blows up i think yep. that'll be the key for dynasty for baseball is building it up as a market once it does grow in popularity as teapot theorizes which i think it it will relative to some of the other brands are they going to protect that brand are they going to 3x the print run like they did with sapphire and i think they won't with sapphire from 2018 to 2019 they're roughly 3x the print run with tops cosmic chrome from 2022 to 2023 they're roughly 3x the print run that's okay that's maximizing profits they're not trying to protect the sanctity of a chase card or the sanctity of the high-end pulls from a product that wasn't supposed to be, well, Sapphire at the time. You can make the argument it was, but it was with be. Cosmic Chrome, certainly not. So I think I think with Dynasty, I think they're going to have to be very, very careful in how they react to increased demand because Bowman took a long time to build up as a market. You can almost describe it as like a moat, and it's just, you know, the the water has just gotten wider and wider over time. Maybe a Warren Buffett analogy that I use 
wrong, but um, it took a long time to build up Bowman, right? And now you've gotten, you, you have loyal Facebook groups. You've got one for Dynasty, but it's small relative to the Bowman Chrome groups. You've got to build up that demand slowly over time with slow, sustainable increases in prices and not, oh, this is like the new Lorcana or Project 2020, and then everybody gets hurt and leaves and goes back to Bowman Chrome. Yep. I agree. And this is just what I wanted to show, Ty. This is another concern I have, Definitive, which is definitively one of Top's most important products. One thing I want to note, Top's is pumping Dynasty right now, but Top's pumps everything whenever it's the opportunity to pump something to make money. Like that's, at the end of the day, Top's is here to make money. They care about us, but not that much, right? Like they care about us enough to buy their product. But Definitive recently actually introduced, they used to only have the vertical um, RPAs. They recently introduced horizontal RPA. So this is the dynasty set, which I think looks incredibly good. Um, I think that not dynasty, this is definitive dynasty is this one right here. Right. And so now it's competing against really great patch autographs in definitive, which arguably is even more high end product cost per card is higher than dynasty. Cause it's like $1,200 a box. Yeah. Uh, but the other thing with dynasty, that's tough. And Ty, you can attest to this being in basketball. The ROI in basketball makes no sense with sports cards. It makes no sense. You get wrecked 99% of the time. And that's the model tops is seeing. And I think wants to adopt partially, but like the vet autographs in this are a nightmare unless you get a few select players because Mike Trout, a nice RPA, RPA nice patch autograph of Mike Trout, 500 bucks. Yeah. And you lose more than 60% of the value on that card. Yeah. But my point is like, this is concerning to me and concerning in the sense where I agree with you for those players in that era. Absolutely. There was less rookie cards, only RPAs. I totally agree with you, but mine is the long-term collectability of these cards is going to be challenged. And one thing I've noticed collecting an era where cards generally are different than they are now, like in like the 2010, like early 2010 to 2015, those sets were different. The parallels were different. And they have a hard time catching on because it's not the same as it is today. People don't collect them today, so they don't collect yeah. them in retroactively. So that's yeah, I, I do agree with the long-term aspect of it in terms of the collectability um, and the fact that it would be really hard for some of these cards to become iconic because of the variability of them and other things. Like that's I've I've called out that concern on my on the market movers channel a number of times, specific to Panini products, and just saying there's too many. And there's other flaws with these high-end products. It doesn't, at least so far, and I think, I don't know, we're several years into this now, at least so far, it hasn't negatively impacted the value of those cards, like within the first, well, for sure at release, but even within like the first five years. Um, obviously, those players start to fall off, and then people just start pumping into the next hype machine, and it's all the hot potato game. Um, it's just sort of one of those things that I accept as the nature of the way uh, that sports cards are in the short term. I will note Ronald Acuna Jr.'s, for example, I know I keep going back to him, but he's just an easy example. And he's one of the guys I think of in this scenario. His PSA 10 uh, uh, Bowman Chrome Auto Refractor, number to 499, sold for a hair under $5,000 back in August of 2020. And most recently, that card on March 17 sold for four and a half thousand dollars. So it's down five hundred dollars since since that same time frame in 2020. Acuna's Dynasty RPAs are up four hundred percent in that same time frame. So I think there's I think there is a shift happening to people looking at the price changes and how some of those things don't make a lot of sense. Um, that I think there's still some wiggle room in there, but I guess I guess. I I I agree with you on that, but I think Acuna is a tough an example to use because he's kind of the exception to the rule in almost every way. Like that 2018 class is to me. Um, but also, I think that's more of an issue with us paying for PS. Jeff, have you said anything this episode? I'm so sorry. Oh, Jeff, I, I, Jeff I, wanted I, to debate, but I di I did remind you to to remind the viewers what RPA means. I think that's the last thing I said. So I'll um, say this, Jeff, and then I want to hear your thoughts while I have it in my brain. But um. Well, I don't know what I'm saying, but people, one thing I want to note is people in other sports that cross, one thing I've noticed is they usually don't have a lot of information and knowledge to really buy a cool card like this. They usually go for the iconic card that they see, which in a lot of cases is the Bowman Chrome. And so that's another thing I have concerning about people who just want to dabble in baseball cards. 
is that might be a hard challenge to educate them sufficiently to buy these RPAs and so, define them, right? Because all only, the images and all these things. There's only, it only takes, it doesn't take a lot of people because of these cards don't sell super often. Like, uh, you know, take, take somebody else, take, pick another player. Give me Jordan. 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 Okay. Pick Jordan. His dynasty RPAs don't sell super often. Um, it doesn't take, it only takes two people on a particular auction to be competing for something, you know, with a perceived yeah. value. And if you, I've had a lot of people since the, my video went out a few days ago on, on Saturday, uh, on the market movers channel, DMing me on Instagram in the comments, um, texting me, people I know saying, I, I 100% agree. I 1000% agree with this. I'm, I'm glad you said this. Nobody else seems to be talking about it. But all of a sudden, there's all this, you know, overwhelming support that there's that RPAs are criminally undervalued in baseball. So I think that's an interesting aspect as well. Yeah, and I want to point out, I think they're sick. The, some of the coolest rookie cards out there. I just they're think amazing. the Bowman Chrome autograph is something that no other sport has to worry about. Where it is the clear one card. There is one Bowman Chrome autograph, and there is nothing else in that like the first logo so that's tough for other sports and rookies jeff give us a lecture teach us you're the smartest oh well there's there's a there's a lot to get to i you both made some excellent points one thing i've been hearing about since i got back into the hobby in 2017 was how all these basketball and football collectors are going to come over and i've never seen it ty does make a good point about tops uh and fanatics getting the licenses back might actually make that happen um uh, so yeah i appreciate that uh, one thing that really concerns me is what Scott talked about with all the different images and how much they are producing. So like Adley, who said has nine different images. So how do you decide what's the best one? Uh, I feel like there's, they're diluting themselves. So Ty, you did say, well, let's go back to like 2016 through 2022. And yes, I can appreciate that, especially for a guy like Acuna, but to to Scott's point, going forward, if this doesn't catch on because mm-hmm. they start printing so much, if they 3x the print run or even double the print run or start creating more horizontal and vertical autos for Dynasty, even just one set, then will those previous ones hold any value or will they just fall by the wayside? So I, I'd have concerns about that. Um, the thing is, when when I first got back in, I loved the idea of having patches because when I collected before, there were no jerseys or any patches. So I really liked that and liked the way they looked. But it was kind of overwhelming then. I went to a, the, at the Burbank show, there was a guy who had an entire case full of Nolan Ryan patch autos. And it was just dozens and dozens of these. I know that guy. I've seen that it, too. <laughs> yeah. And it just kind of I was overwhelming. It was, it was almost like, if you have that many, do they, yeah. do they all sort of lose importance? So yeah. that kind of, um, I, I don't know, just, it's hard for me to shake that perspective. So I appreciate yeah. what both of you guys are saying and I could see it going either way, but I just still have a little concern. Yeah, that's it. I know, that, I know that dealer. <laughs> I've seen that before too. It is uh, eye opening. Do the, the one, the biggest risk here and maybe why this hasn't been realized yet, this, this huge inefficiency that you see panning out over over the next one to three years, Ty. Is there a chance that Fanatics licenses or buys Panini and then the high-end brand of Flawless and NT for those two sports doesn't go away? And that is what moves over to baseball. And they realize like, oh, there's something broken with Dynasty. Let's try this instead. And then you've got people that already understand the Panini learning curve that are doing the breaks, buying in a breaks or Fanatics Live. It's an easier crossover to a product they already understand. Hey, and give them fake patches too with baseball. Keep keep those fake. That's the way they like them. Um, yeah, to, that, to quote the phrase from Scott, there's a world where that could happen. Uh, yeah. I said it a lot. I don't know if it's, I don't know if it's this world, but yeah, maybe, maybe the the, the cannibal. Oh, did he already talk about that, Scott? No, he. Oh, okay. No, no. Okay. It was just a phrase. Okay. Yeah, he was yeah, just yeah. making fun of me. He's being right. mean. <laughs> the, what I worry about a little bit is cannibalization of things like the MLB debut patch on yes. Dynasty right now. And again, they're going to be pumping more and more of these material cards because of the relationships with the leagues. 
and all the crazy innovations that they're going to be able to actually execute on that Topps was never able to do with some of these higher end cards as gimmicks. They want a chase to be included in every in every product they said or most of the products, I guess. And that means RPAs in a lot of cases. So I, I do think, though, what Teapot's saying with liquidity, that is a positive in a lot of cases. And I think if you increase the supply of patch cards for baseball, I think there needs to be a period of time where they do that in order for people to notice them, understand them, get used to transacting in them. What Jeff's saying about like, well, we don't know, like, well, is this pose better than this pose or is this patch better than this patch? I think there needs to be a period of awareness for patch cards and maybe 2Xing or 3Xing the total print of those things. I know Scott says there's, there's already too many. But maybe that's something that we have to go through just to build out those pockets in the hobby that prefer patch cards over other tops rookies and Bowman firsts. I, I don't know how they get there, but um, it's definitely possible. And I've picked up probably of all of us here, other than Teapot, I probably bought the most Dynasty cards. That includes Chris too, because I like the way they look. And I do yeah. think that, you know, I bought it Aaron Judge. Um, because I did see an opportunity and I made money on that card and I bought a couple of Yardon Alvarez RPAs and I made money on those cards. And it just feels like most of them actually feel a lot cooler in hand, to be honest, versus just like, oh, like it's a card that I'll never look at again until I sell it because it's just, you know, it's yellow instead of orange or it's blue instead of green shimmer. But I already know exactly what it looks like, so why would I even bother looking at it for more than a second and a half when it comes to the mail before it goes into my safety deposit box? The Dynasty card is one that you can appreciate a bit more. And the fact that it's got game use patch, that's pretty cool. Yeah. Yeah. My 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 thing is I like them. I'm not saying they're bad. And I hope I made that clear. Sometimes in these conversations, I just want to I think what people have heard is you hate Dynasty, and I think Bowman Chrome is doomed. That's what yeah. people are gonna and neither of us even agree with the, either of those things but yeah. i guess my thing is they look great but at the end of the day it's one rookie in a sea of rookies and i just have a hard time envisioning it having a monumental rise i 100 percent agree with ty about a specific era that absolutely can and probably is going to have value even if it's only going up 20 to 50 percent yes i believe that but like i do want to show this real quick um i found this searching i i think we knew these were happening but i hadn't seen one this is from inception <laughs> And Inception is notorious for player-worn patches, but this is an on-card, which is random because usually they're stickers. Mm -hmm. On-card, first hit, Logo Man one of one. This is his the jersey from his first hit. And like this is randomly an in Inception. Why isn't this in Dynasty? Like, why are we doing all? If we want to make Dynasty yeah. a thing, why are we doing this? Like, put this in Dynasty. Put the rookie patch in Dynasty. I know, like the the bit, the reason is we want accessibility for collectors on these. But if we really want to make something the NT of baseball. We can't just keep putting our best ideas into random sets like Inception. And this is Tops trying to like grab money, which is my concern, more than creating an amazing product, which is a good product, but it could be epic if the rookie patch one of one was in Dynasty and then like the, the MLB patch from their first hit was in Dynasty. Like that is a product that tells a story, but it's stuffed in Inception and no one cares about this versus the other stuff. So it's just that type of stuff worries me. Yep. Well, but, fun fact, Otani's flawless one of one RPA, uh, unlicensed player event worn, sold for more than his one of one dynasty game used RPA. That's crazy. Yeah. That wouldn't happen yeah. now, would it, if that sold today? Well, it was with it was like a year ago. It there there was a probably between twenty twenty one through twenty twenty two and maybe into twenty three a little bit, the flawless RPAs kind of got out of hand for baseball. All opinion he did, like the prisms and this numbered parallels and everything. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But I, I know the the patch, the fake patch, sticker auto cards in a lot of cases, those were doing about half of the equivalent dynasty at the time. Yeah. Um, so I'm not surprised that with a card market correcting that if you go back a little bit, well, I mean, it shouldn't happen. It's still a surprise, but I'm not completely shocked that that happened to the Tani. Yeah. One thing I'll note is I have zero of these in my collection, not because I don't like them. The players I collect don't have them, right? It basically, the first set was in 2014, but they didn't really have RPAs, I don't believe, in the same format until 2015. So, Jeff, I want to hear more from you, and the viewers do too. 
No, I think this is a very thorough discussion. I'd be interested to hear in, in the comments what the viewers think. Uh, yeah. Is, is Ty onto something here or is, is this uh, dynasty, the, the run we're seeing in dynasty, at least a little bit of a run. Is that, a, is that a passing fad? Uh, a lot's going to change in the landscape with, with fanatics taking over those other sports licenses. And I think yeah. a lot of baseball card collectors don't, realize what that impact is going to be just of them having the license of these other sports their attention be diverted is quality control going to go even further out the window what sorts of uh, sets are they going to try to resurrect from the past uh tops basketball and football so it's there's going to be a lot to unpack here so i applaud ty for taking a deep dive into something like this and and seeing seeing what he could find i agree and Dynasty converted me, by the way. So it's interesting. I'm not, I, I actually historically haven't been an RPA guy in football or basketball at all. And again, there's a cost prohibitive aspect for me mm -hmm. on a lot of this, but especially in basketball, football. But um, once I started seeing Dynasty cards, and like you said, Bill, once I got one in my hand, I was just like, these are nice. These are really nice cards. And uh, they kind of swung me over. So I'm admittedly, you know, a fanboy of the product. And, um, I don't know. We'll see. They're great cards, so um, time will tell. This is a card I drool over all the time, but I can't justify buying it. That's so cool with the Chief Wahoo patch on Lindor's RPA. They just yeah. made the rookie logos on the back for some reason. They changed yes. that, I believe, in 2017 or 2018. But great card, right? Good-looking card. Um, There's a, there was a Mauer, Joe Mauer, that came up recently that, that just sold that I wanted to make a play on. It sold for like four or something, and I was tempted. Yeah, you'd be surprised how little some of these go. Not seeing the Mauer, but um, how little of these go. But overall, do they have any Guardian patches, Scott? I want to patch up the Guardian itself. You want the? I can look. I was kidding. Oh, I was like, okay, that's a random request. Not Chief Wahoo, but okay. I want a, a patch of the Guardian. Ty sent me a couple links. I'm yeah, they're just a couple. So there's an Acuna that's from this year's set we talked about. It's a vertical. That's just a nice looking card. Really, really clean. I like the shine um nice auto so i'm interested to see where that one ends uh this when is it's a season patch i believe so this is from the playoffs game yeah board. and then uh yeah and then the other one was the mauer uh that just ended that i was drooling over myself but um yeah what a great patch yeah there are some really great buy that better yeah typically if you can find the ones numbered to five those those have the best patches. Um, I even prefer those personally to like the laundry tags and the Nike swooshes and things like that. Mm -hmm. like this card's really freaking cool. Like I think they're great. I'm just concerned about basically the step the state of rookie cards right now. Yeah. And there's like protection that Bowman Chrome has to offer, unfortunately. But at the end of the day, though, if we start looking at final thought for me, and then we we're good to go. I want to say again, I like these, and if Mookie had one, I'd be all over it. I, I promise you, I would be. Um, but if we look at the increasing number of these at cards that are there, so in particular, Adley Rutschman having nine versions, each version has 16 cards. I believe that's 144. Uh, but if we look at Bowman Chrome Autograph, gold, orange, red, all those combined, it's still half. And so I think the the idea of it ever surpassing or approaching is going to be difficult because of that and the fact it's the only first. So, But great set, Ty. I think... You have great taste in cards. So <laughs> thank you. <laughs> okay. Any final thoughts or we feel like we're in a good place to end? Nope. I think uh, Bowman Chrome autos are here to stay. Just making that clear. I think dynasty cards are cool. Just making that clear. Thanks for watching everybody. We'll see you in the next video. Liars. <laughs>